Let's work through these apes energy problems for those of you that couldn't be in class today. So here at the top you have some conversion factors to remember. But of all of these, if your brain only has room for one, remember this one. That watts are equal to joules per second. That's important because in a lot of these problems, you have to solve, like for instance, how much power was used in X number of, and then unit of time. And in these conversions, there's no direct reference to a unit of time. That's where watts come in. You have joules per second, and then from seconds, you can convert to any other unit of time. Then here, we have a quick summarization of your two laws of the thermodynamics. The first law, energy is not neither created nor destroyed, it's just converting forms. So you have electricity that comes into the light bulb and is converted into light and heat. And then your second law of thermodynamics comes into play in that no energy transformation is 100% efficient. You're going to lose some of that usable energy in every transformation. In the example here, you have 20% efficiency so 20% of the energy from the light bulb is converted into usable light. 80% of it is lost as heat. It's considered not usable because that's not the purpose of the light bulb. And then the rest of today was just working on some practice of conversions. Number one, how much energy in kilojoules does a 75 watt light bulb use when it's turned on for 25 minutes? So there's a lot of important information in here. Our final answer needs to be in kilojoules. It's on for 25 minutes, and it uses 75 watts. But we don't have a unit of time. How can we solve for minutes? Easy, because watts are actually joules per second. So really, this light bulb is using 75 joules per one second. I know that there are 60 seconds in one minute and that I used it for 25 minutes. My units, seconds cancel seconds, minutes cancel minutes. Oh darn, I need to be in kilojoules and what I'm left with is joules. Ah, but knowing my metric prefixes, I know that 1000 joules equals one kilojoule. And now joules cancels, the unit I'm left with is kilojoule, which is perfect. So from here, I would just go ahead and put this in my calculator. 75 times 60 times 25 divided by 1,000 gives me 112.5, and then do not forget your unit, kilojoules. And then to make it easy for the greater slash me, go ahead and put that present in a box. So I know exactly what number you want me to uh, consider your final answer. Otherwise, I'm gonna take the number either furthest to the right or closest to the bottom. But if you put it in a box, that's the one I'll pay attention to. Now there's nothing to actually solve in this next problem, but there are two important bits of info. One, we have a conversion factor that can save us time. One hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. So you can take the time of converting hours to minutes and then hours, uh, minutes to seconds, or you can go directly from hours to seconds. Save you some time. And then that ties into the next part, where one kilowatt hour is equal to 3,600 kilojoules. That is a value that's going to be very important and it will again save you time. So just like joules are equal to watts over second, uh, joules over seconds, watts are equal to joules over seconds. There we go. One kilowatt hour is equal to 3,600 kilojoules. Put that in your brain. Now on the next page, Assume your electric bill showed you used 1,355 kilowatt hours over a 30 day period. Before we continue to the actual problem, when College Board gives you example problems like this, they are grounded in reality, which means these answers that you calculate should be pretty reasonable, logical numbers. 
So if for energy used in kilojoules, say we find we have like 900,000 exajoules, we've made a mistake. If we calculate our energy used is 0.5 kilojoules, we've made a mistake. We need to have a reasonable answer. That in mind, let's go. Find the energy used in kilojoules for the 30-day period. Well, I know kilowatt hours, and I know that this is already for a 30-day period. So 1,355 kilowatt hours per 30 days. And I know that one kilowatt hour is equal to 3,600 kilojoules. The units I'm left with are three are kilojoules per 30 days. So I calculate her. 1,355 times 3,600. My answer comes out to be 4,878,000 kilojoules per 30 days. Or, these energy problems is an excellent opportunity to flex your scientific notation skills. So I get 4.878 times 10 to the 6th kilojoules per 30 days. Now generally, College Board will accept either, unless they specify to put it in a specific format. I just prefer scientific notation. Now, this is a great example of how College Board tends to word these problems. It's not a series of separate equations, but your questions usually build into each other. So in this case, B is just a continuation of A. But rather than being in kilojoules per 30 days, we're going to end up in joules per day. So we take our previous answer. I'm going to stick with the scientific notation. Times 10 to the 6th kilojoules per 30 days. And I know that 1 kilojoule is equal to 1,000 joules. So I take my 4.878 times 10 to the 6th, and I multiply by 1,000, and then divide that by 30, and I get... 162,600,000 joules per day. With all those zeros, this is just an excellent example of why you should stick with your scientific notation. 1.626 times 10 to the 8th joules per day. Both answers are perfectly equivalent. I just prefer the scientific notation. I think it looks cleaner. Part C. At a rate of 0 0.749 dollars per kilowatt hour, what was my electric bill for this month? So I can either take my joules per day and convert back to kilowatt hours for the month, or I was already given it at the beginning of the problem. So I have 1,355 kilowatt hours for this month times a cost of 0 0.0749 dollars per one kilowatt hour. The unit I'm left with is dollars, which is a standard unit for paying bills. My answer comes out to be 0 0.0749, 101 dollars 49 cents which is a very reasonable number. Because again, College Board will give you examples that are based in reality. An electric bill of $101.5 per month is pretty reasonable. Okay. Three, a 100 watt light bulb is 20% efficient. So how much does it use in 12 hours? I need a unit of time, 100 joules per second and I know that there are 3,600 seconds in one hour, and I use it for 12 hours. 100 times 3,600 times 12 gives me 4,320,000 
joules or 4.32 times 10 to the sixth joules. Put it in a box, that's a present for me. Now we're going to skip B for a moment and go to C because C is really just a continuation of A. I want to convert my total energy use into kilowatt hours. So I have my answer in joules, 4.32 times 10 to the sixth joules. And I do not know how many joules are in a kilowatt hour directly, but I do know that 1,000 joules equals one kilojoule. And then I know that 1,000, no, pardon me, 3,600 kilojoules is equal to one kilowatt hour. Joules cancels joules, kilojoules cancels kilojoules. I'm left with kilowatt hours. So 4.32 times 10 to the sixth divided by 1,000 divided by 3,600 gives me a total of 1.2 Whoops. kilowatt hours, which using a light bulb for 12 hours is a pretty reasonable amount of energy. Now, for B, how much energy does the uh, does the bulb convert to light during the 12 hours? Two ways to approach this. You can either use your kilowatt hours or use your joules. We'll do both. 1.2 kilowatt hours times my 20% efficiency, which is just 20 divided by 100, convert your percent into a decimal, 0.2. Gives me 0 0.24 kilowatt hours. That's a response. Or I could take 4.32 times 10 to the sixth joules and also multiply that by my efficiency of 0 0.20. And that gives me 864,000 joules, or 8.64 times 10 to the fifth joules. Okay, I ran out of space. So it's not very pretty, but bear with me. Okay, number four. I really like this problem because it's very indicative of how College Board used to set these up when you didn't have a calculator. There's a lot of self-canceling math in this problem, and it shows that the work required is really not as high as you would think. So 400 watts is really four, not 400, 4,000 joules per second. And here we'll do some side math. We're doing five loads of laundry per week for four weeks. That gives me 20 loads. And one hour equals one load. So really, I'm using this for 20 hours. So that equals 3,600 seconds per one hour. And I'm using this for 20 hours. Now, there are two questions to answer in this problem. I need my energy usage in joules and kilowatt hours. Right now, I have joules, so I can do my first calculation. I get 4,000 times 3,600 times 20, and that gives me a very big number. 2.88 times 10 to the eighth joules. I have two answers, so I need two presents. There's present number one. And now for my second problem, I can either start all over again at joules and continue to work my way towards kilowatt hours, or the first part of this equation is not going to change, so I can just build off of this. So I will convert joules to kilojoules. 1,000 joules is one kilojoule, and then 
3,600 kilojoules is one kilowatt hour. Now, canceling my units, kilojoules, kilojoules, joules, joules. I'm left with kilowatt hours, which is my second response. Now, this is where I like that self-canceling math. Here I have multiplying by 3,600, and here I have dividing by 3,600. I can just cancel those. I can ignore them. Anything that's a 1 doesn't affect my math. And then I have 4,000 divided by 1,000. I can just cancel those thousands. Really, this problem works out to what is 4 times 20? And that answer would be 80 kilowatt hours. Not too bad at all. Part B, that's the uh, energy usage for four weeks. Now I need my cost for four weeks. 80 kilowatt hours times, and one kilowatt hour is going to cost me 0 0.0758 dollars. 80 times 0 0.0758 gives me an operating cost of six dollars and six cents for four weeks, which is a reasonable amount to pay for drying. We're going to skip number five because kilocalories is almost always used for biological energy, not electricity. So our final problem, we're also skipping C because that's another kilocalories problem. Assume you use an air conditioner for a total of 137 days, 24 hours per day at a rate of 7.25 kilowatt hours per hour. Assume the cost per kilowatt hour is uh, $0 $0.0825 per kilowatt hour and one kilowatt hour is equal to 3,400 BTU. Go ahead and pause. Take a moment, try to solve it, see if you come up with the responses that I came up with. Okay, this I'm not gonna do the work, I'm just gonna show you the answers. The total number of kilowatt hours should be 23,838 kilowatt hours per year. The cost of air conditioning should have worked out to $1,966.64. Oops, hold up, hold up. That's almost $2 million. That's not what we want. Ah, yes, per year, which is a reasonable number. And then for how many BTUs, that should have come out to be 81 million. 49,200 BTU. All right, there we go. Now you're geniuses.